Hey everyone, welcome, welcome. Ugh. We are live once again, Friday night, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. It can always mean just one thing, time for our weekly live streams. How's everyone doing? Uh, how has your week been? Uh, mine could have been better. <laughs> I'll just, I'll say that. Uh, uh, Max, hello. Nathan, uh, finally be able to catch a stream. Welcome, Nathan. Milan is with us again. Welcome, Milan. Glad to have you with us, man. Wolf, of course, always with us. How you doing, Wolf? Matt, how are you? <laughs> Milan, my Titanic. Yes, sir. Uh, and I am working on doing some video of your Olympic as well. So, we can look forward to that on the stream, too. <clears throat> Joining us this week, we haven't seen her in a bit. USS North Carolina, the showboat. Our new 1-700, Ravel Titanic. And Mauritania. We haven't seen Mauritania in a while. Wolf's favorite canard ship. Let's go ahead and get our footage rolling here, and we will start our discussions for the week. <clears throat> Uh, Nathan, you don't want to know what happened to me yesterday, you'd flip. <laughs> ah, hit us with it. It's all good. Ah. So, yeah, guys, uh, I had a bit of a rough week, so I am definitely happy to be here with you guys and talk about the things that we love. All of our favorite ships, our ocean liners, our warships, you name it. So, and the way I'm going to start this week off is I'm going to present you guys uh, with a question. So, <clears throat> let, me cre let me create a scenario for you. Um, let's see. Let's see. I'm actually, uh, hang on, guys. Uh, my camera's not showing up. I just realized that. Uh, bear with me a second here. Uh, let's uh, let, let me figure out something real quick here. That's uh, unusual. I do have the camera set up uh, to act to work on this. Um, let's see. Sorry, guys. Bear with me one second here. As you saw, we were, we're starting off with the Texas. A lot of news about the Texas this week, and uh, we'll be we'll be discussing that uh, as well. Let's see. All right, here we go, and we're in business. Uh, we have a newcomer. Uh, uh, is it pronounced Karna? Uh, first time, first timer here. Name is Aaron. All the Discord people told me to. To subscribe and show up. Well, that's awesome, man. I'm 
Welcome. Welcome to our, our weekly live stream. Excuse me. <clears throat> Definitely glad to have you with us. So uh, let's go ahead and get started here. So yeah, let's just go ahead and start uh, talking. Uh, we'll start off talking about the taxes for a bit. Um, so for you guys who uh, may or may not be aware, uh, Texas is out of dry dock. Her dry dock repairs are complete. She uh, has been refloated. And she is now going to be going through the process of uh, interior restoration, um, the deck restorations, uh, superstructure restorations, interior restorations, all of that stuff. Everything they needed to do to the hull and lower parts of the ship is done. And from what I understand, uh, probably sometime next year, Old Tex is finally going to be uh, reopened to tours. Uh, Nathan, I was backing in the driveway when a mail truck stopped all of a sudden and reversed into the rear end of my mom's car. That was an ordeal and a half. I can imagine so. Um, well, Nathan, of course, uh, we certainly hope that uh, your mom is okay, um, you know, first and foremost. Uh, so, yeah, guys, that's what's going on with the Texas. Uh, still no word yet on when the kid is going to be uh, going in a dry dock. I've been following the, uh, well, I, I've been following the Facebook, uh, the kid's Facebook page for years. And right now, uh, they're still in the process of cataloging and removing uh, all of the, uh, the items off of the ship as we speak. And the target month, because we don't have a target date, the target month is still April as of right now. Uh, well, if the next battleship that'll be in dry dock will be the USS New Jersey. Yes, and from what I understand, uh, Steve, uh, our friend from uh, Blue Ribbon Channel, is going to be going to the dry dock. He, uh, he told me that a few weeks ago. I hope I wasn't supposed not supposed to uh, divulge that information. <laughs> Uh, Car uh, Carna, uh, I'm gonna have to remember his name. Aaron, uh, I watched, I watched her leave the dock. They live streamed it. It was awesome. Yes, uh, I, well, I was at work, so I watched uh, as much as I could of it. And a uh, fun fact, um, since you're, uh, we're meeting for the first time, Aaron, uh, I did do the dry dock tour of the Texas, and um, I did this in November. I have pictures of me uh, in front of the ship, all around the ship, and this was before they even did the paint job, so she was still looking kind of rough when I saw her. But I, I have those pictures. Um, if you're if you plan to join our Discord, you are, um, I can repost those for you if you're interested in seeing them. Uh, Nathan, we were okay. The car got scraped. scrapped to hell, thankfully. I wasn't at fault because I was already in motion. When he stopped to back up, I didn't even have a chance to react. It was like he floored it. I got you, Nathan. Well, I'm, first and foremost, we are certainly glad, uh, you know, you were all right. And uh, your mom, too, if she was in the car with you, I mean, that's first and foremost. You know, the car will get fixed. You know, when you guys are okay, that's ultimately, you know, what matters. Steve is here. Steve, welcome. Welcome. Steve, I don't know if I was supposed to uh, mention this or not, but I, I kind of spilled the beans. I did tell everyone uh, what you told me, that you are, in fact, going to visit the New Jersey in dry dock. So uh, my apologies to you if that was a secret. I did not mean to divulge that. If it was, I just got excited and it just, you know, I just, it, I blurted it out. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Aaron, uh, Blue Ribbon, his ears must have been ringing. Yes, because we were talking about Steve. <laughs> oh. Well, since Steve is here, like I said I was going to start this off, uh, this off with, um, with a question. So I have a question to uh, all my Queen Mary people. Uh, actually, let me read Nathan real quick. I never had an accident with a government vehicle. We exchanged information and the police came out to do an incident report. That took about an hour. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> uh, Steve, no, no secret. Uh, so, good. I'm glad I did not uh, m m ruin your surprise or anything. <laughs> but, yeah, so uh, for my Queen Mary uh, folks here, 
uh, let me uh, let me create a scenario for you guys. And uh, I want to and really anyone can chime in on this. Uh, you know, there's no right or wrong answer. I'm looking for opinions. So it's August 14th, 1942. An ocean liner is steaming from the Americas to Europe, serving as a troop ship. It's the middle of the night. They're in the North Atlantic. The sea is a dead flat calm. You could almost say it's like glass. When not too far ahead, less than a, even less than a quarter of a mile, the lookouts spot an iceberg directly in the path of the ship. They have seconds to react and get the ship out of the way. The ship, unfortunately, does not or is not able to get out of the way in time and collides with this iceberg. Again, this is August 14th, 1942. The name of the ship is the Queen Mary. All that to ask you guys this question uh, in your view. Oh, wow. Devastating strike. Three citadels and a destroy. Old Texas wrecking shop there. Um, and anyway, the ship is the Queen Mary. She strikes an iceberg in the exact same areas that Titanic did. Does Queen Mary survive this collision? We know Titanic did not. Does the Queen Mary survive? And I will read chat while you guys are uh, are looking for uh, or I'm wait while I'm waiting on you guys to answer. Ozzy, welcome, Ozzy. Uh, remember time change after Saturday and Sunday? Yes, the dreaded daylight savings time. Ugh, it's annoying, isn't it? It is for me anyway. <laughs> Let's see. Steve says she would. Mark also says. She would. Uh, and we're, again, we're talking about would the Queen Mary survive the exact same type of collision with an iceberg that Titanic did? Now, uh, Wolf also says she would survive. Now, as we know, um, I don't know. Uh, uh, Aaron also says Ozzy. So everyone is pretty much in agreement that the Queen Mary would survive this collision. Now, admittedly, and you guys know this, uh, I am not familiar with, um, as familiar with how the Queen Mary was built, you know, uh, her watertight bulkhead system as I am with Titanic. So, what, uh, Nathan, they learned from the Titanic's mistakes. Absolutely. Well, and they, they learned immediately from the Titanic's mistakes, uh, even with Titanic's sister, Olympic and Britannic. Um, after... Titanic sank. Uh, sometime after that, Olympic was brought back into dry dock. She was withdrawn from service and she was given a complete overhaul and was essentially given a double haul. Um, the lessons learned from Titanic were implemented into Britannic because Britannic was still under construction at the time Titanic sank. So White Star, even with Titanic's sisters, learned from the mistakes made with Titanic. So it only stands to reason that a ship 20 to 25 years newer than the Queen Mary, Cunard would have learned from those same mistakes as well, and they would have implemented changes into their own designs. And I, even though I don't know as much about the Queen's engineering, you know, her, her building, her structure, as I do Titanic, I've always believed, in my view, that the Queen Mary would survive a collision just like that. And Steve's got us a good response here. I was waiting for you, Steve, to ask that question because I knew you were going to have a great response to this. <laughs> so I was waiting on purpose. And Steve says, after the peak tank, only the first two compartments are not double-hulled. After that, the compartments are double-hulled. She could survive with the first three compartments flooded. Now, Steve, I would imagine, and you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, uh, the Queen also um, would have had uh, larger watertight compartments than Titanic did. Uh, would I be correct on that? 
Uh, Steve also says the Berg may have sh not the Berg may not have shown up on radar possibly, but if it had, they would have had a uh, ten plus mile range. Right, right, and that's true. I, I'm not factoring in the technology advancement uh, from Titanic's time to Queen Mary's time, and of course, you know the International Ice Patrol. You got to factor that in as well. <clears throat> Uh, Wolf says, I wonder what Olympic and Britannic, <clears throat> excuse me, I wonder what Olympic and Britannic would have looked like if she made it up to World War II. <clears throat> That's a good question, uh, Wolf. Um, we can only guess. Um, Aquitania is the only one uh, off the top of my head that I can think of that from the Titanic's era that served in both world wars. And from what I understand, um, while she was kind of looking, you know, she was showing her age in World War II, she was, her hull was still very much uh, structurally sound, and she could have gone on for m even more years than she did. So based on that, um, I would think that Olympic and Britannic would have been okay for several more years after World War II, uh, had they been around up to that point. <clears throat> uh, Aaron Owell changes changes things not having navigation equipment from the 40s. A absolutely. <laughs> Ozzy, Steve always knows. And that that's why we, that's why Steve is uh, one of our experts here. Uh, Wolf is our, our warships expert. I've got Steve here for the Queen Mary. <laughs> uh uh, Steve says, Queen Mary's watertight compartments were sealed atop with the watertight decks. Good point. And actually, I did know that, but admittedly, I completely forgot about that. So, yeah, um, and I'm fairly certain that uh, the Olympic class did not have that feature in them, which is, and well, they didn't, of course, which is why the water would spill over each bulkhead on Titanic as she was going down. Well, have, having said that, um, uh, I'll pick you guys' brains a little bit more. Uh, so we're, we all seem to be in agreement that Queen Mary would survive the iceberg collision. Now, again, the exact same scenario Titanic was in. Would the Queen Mary survive if she was placed in the same situation as either Lusitania or Britannic. See now it's a bit. I I think that that's a bit more of a a, a tricky situation. Um, but I'll wait to hear you guys' thoughts on that. Uh, Steve says she just had higher water type uh, bulkheads. Okay, cool deal. Uh, Matt, if you're able to keep the sixteenth of this moat open, I have a photo shoot lined up with. Um, uh, I will have to get back with you on that, uh, Matt. I am not 100% certain uh, on that yet. Uh, so in, in reference to which, would the Queen survive those two uh, situations, Lusitania or Britannic, uh, Steve says yes. Mark says yes, uh, she would survive. Ozzy says yes, she would survive. Um, those, uh, and, and again, uh, due to uh, my, my lack of knowledge on uh, the Queen, I wasn't quite as sure. I was pretty certain, without doing a ton of research, that she would survive the iceberg. I wasn't sure about a mine or a torpedo. So um, I will definitely defer to you guys on that, because, um, I mean, why not? <laughs> uh so yeah, those are uh, some random thoughts I was having about the Queen this week. Um, let's see. So another question, uh, and this will be a two-part question. Uh, what is your Mount Rushmore of ocean liners and warships? Uh, Steve, with triple-plated one inch thick hull plates along her underside near her bilge keel damage would be minimal there you have it 
uh, Milan. To be honest, even Britannic would have survived the mine if it wasn't for the open portholes. I'm glad you brought that up, uh, Milan, because actually, um, you know, we recently, uh, not this past week, but the one before, uh, we kind of celebrated Britannic's birthday. Um, I went ahead and rewatched the documentary that came out in 2017. It was called uh, The Mystery of Britannic. And the guy who's like the star of the thing and uh, narrating or all that, um, in his view, uh, the portholes, uh, I'm trying to remember, I don't want to misquote, I'm trying to remember how he said it. Basically, I'd have to go back and rewatch it to remember exactly how he worded it. So um, it was basically something to the effect he said that um, the portholes being open kind of didn't make a difference. I uh, disagree with that uh, completely. Let's see. Uh, Steve, uh, as Aaron agreed, uh, agreed, yeah, every, and everyone's agreeing with Milan, and I am also agreeing with Milan. Um, we know for sure. Uh, here, here's here's the facts on Britannic. So what we know, she had. It, it was either five or six compartments breached. I forget exactly how much, and that was a lot of that was because some of the watertight bulkheads uh, failed to close. But when you take into account all the portholes that opened up, that were that were left open, and remember, wartime regulations stated that the portholes were not supposed to be closed, yet they were opened anyway. I forget, and so I remember hearing it somewhere. Somebody talked about the exact how many tons of water per second were pouring into Britannic once the deck was low enough and the open portholes were submerged and it was extremely significant. So I believe that one of two possibilities would have happened had the portholes been closed. She would have not sank at all, or Bartlett would have been able to get the ship, uh, to steer the ship in, uh, towards Kia and beach the ship like he was trying to do. But because those portholes were open and just letting in that much more water, you've got the forced flooding because the ship is still in motion. So it's pulling the ship down even faster because you just have that much more water coming in. So, yeah, I have always personally felt that had the portholes been closed, Britannic could have survived. Um, Lon says, Mike Brady made an excellent video about her last year where he explains this perfectly. Uh, yeah. Uh, and I don't remember the video off the top of my head, Milan, but I am certain that I've seen it because, you know, all of us here, uh, we are all big uh, fans of his channel. So I'm sure we've probably all seen that video. Uh, Mark, first three watertight doors were warped and wouldn't close. Okay, see, I thought it was only one, but uh, yeah, uh, I'll defer to you on that. Uh, Steve agrees with me. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Aaron, I love seeing Battleship Texas on the video. She is an awesome New York class ship. And this is this is our format uh, each week, Aaron. Uh, I come on for an hour. We just talk about warships. We talk about ocean liners. And I'm not actually playing the game that we're looking at. It just gives us uh, an extra topic of conversation and to look at, at least digitally, these historic ships that we're talking about. So this is what I do every week. And actually, guys, I also, uh, before the stream started tonight, I downloaded War Thunder, and I'm going to be trying that game out too and uh, see if I can maybe get some ships from War Thunder that are not in World of Warships. Now, from what I understand, um... Uh, War Thunder is just as much of a grind as War Ships is, so it may take a lot of time before I can get like some really, really nice ships. 
So, uh, in fact, uh, Milan uh, actually uh, sent uh, some footage uh, a few, about a, what, maybe a month or so ago, Milan, of warships where uh, he was playing a, uh, a Fletcher class ship. And another ship, and I, I forget what the other ship was. Um, Wolf might remember, uh, and maybe Milan will remember too, since he's here. Uh, Ozzy says he would have beached the ship if the portholes were closed, uh, referring to Britannic. Uh, yeah, I, I'm full. I'm in full agreement. It seems like we are all in full agreement uh, on this. And I'm, Milan said uh, apparently Mike Brady agrees with us too. So. Uh, Milan, A-A-T, W-T, gameplay. Yes, it is coming. Um, and I, I know I've mentioned this before. So, guys, if you have any type of game and you have the ability to record gameplay footage like this, I don't care what game it is, if it's a, you know, if it's a historic ship, and you would like to see that on the live stream, I will accept those uh, that footage to play here on the live stream and we can talk about uh whatever ships you uh you recorded you know we, we started off with texas here so you know we had a little texas news this week and uh we do this this is how we do it every week so yeah uh, steve agreed ozzy who would have had a better chance of making it steve i i compl i just i wholeheartedly believe if the portholes were closed, uh, Bartlett would have been able to beach the ship. Because it was four miles away from the shore. Four miles. If the portholes were closed, even with forced flooding from the damage from the mine, I, I, just, I just believe Britannic would have, could have been saved. Uh, Milan, the second ship was USS Sumner uh, in the, the uh, War Thunder footage. Thank you, uh, Milan. I couldn't remember. Uh, I also promised to make a Char Short. Uh, a sh Oof. I'm going to butcher that one, guys. Uh, a Char Horse footage, and actually, I started recording it. Then my game crashed mid match. <laughs> uh, so Aaron says, Do we blame the nurses? Uh, if we're going to stick to our guns with and say, yes, this, uh, the ship would have been saved had they not opened the portals. I mean, I know it's, it's kind of ugly to say it, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't like it. I don't, I don't like placing blame. I wasn't in their position. I don't know what they were dealing with on the ship at the time. Uh, you know, with, uh, smells and disease uh i i hate to do it but i mean i there's no i don't i don't know any any way around it i really don't and if i'm missing something guys certainly feel free to correct me you know i i i've said it many times i say it all the time i am no expert i just I know a lot more than, you know, at least like when Titanic, for example, I know a lot more than the person who watched the Cameron movie and takes that as gospel. So, uh, uh, Steve, can't blame Violet, though. And what, and isn't it crazy that the third and final one is the one that she came this close to not surviving? Because, uh, I mean, she survived on Titanic. She got on a lifeboat well before the ship went down. So it wasn't like she was out in the ocean like uh, Yalkin, Thayer, Gracie, Lytol, or so forth, you know, swimming for her life to get to an overturned boat. You know, she was well, she was perfectly safe inside a lifeboat. Oh, that was a good citadel. But, yeah, she had to jump out of one of the lifeboats, uh, out of the lifeboat that she was in, because the lifeboat she was in was one of the ones that got destroyed by the propeller. Uh, Aaron says, obviously hot and needing air. Wolf, from what I heard, the portholes were open because of the heat. Uh, Steve, the smell of blood from wounds is a horrible lingering smell. And I, guys, I cannot argue any of this stuff. 
I and I certainly understand it. Um, unfortunately, though, you know, it's just I we all we all agree. You know, if she would have stayed afloat if the portholes were open and regulations were that the portholes were supposed to be closed. I mean, you know, it's. I really hate placing blame, but it just kind of, it is what it is. Uh, Milan, uh, the open, the, they opened the portholes because Britannic was an ocean liner designed for the cold Atlantic weather. They were sailing on the much warmer Mediterranean. It was really hot inside the ship. And yeah, that makes perfect sense. And we, we can point to the Queen Mary uh, for another example of this. You know, the Queen Mary was designed to be uh, a transatlantic north atlantic ocean liner what happened on her maiden voyage or not her maiden voyage her final voyage uh from southampton to long beach when she had to go south of the equator all the way around south america it was bloody freaking hot on that ship and i know steve will uh steve and all my other queen mary uh folks here will back me up on that uh, Blue Ribbon, didn't uh, Steve, didn't Jacques Cousteau bring her in a sub back to Britannic? Uh, no, Steve. Um, if memory serves, Violet Jessa passed away in the 50s. Uh, the wreck was discovered in uh, 75 or 76. Uh, Aaron, yeah, the final voyage was super bad. Yeah, referring to uh, the Queen Mary's final voyage. Yeah, that had to be completely miserable. If you're if the only ocean liner you want to be on if you're going south of the equator was the big U, SS United States. She was the first ocean liner to be fully air conditioned. So if you're gonna be in South America on an ocean liner, that's the ship you want to be on. Um uh, Steve, it must have been another survivor. I'm, I'm sure uh, it, it had to be, uh, Steve. Can someone look that up? Uh, can someone uh, look up Violet Jessup and uh, see uh, what year or her date that she passed away? I know it was before the wreck was discovered. And uh, I'm sure you, uh, speaking of Violet, uh, you guys have probably heard this, uh, this little story about Violet. Um, and this was towards the latter years in her life. She received a phone call uh, from a person, and I think it was uh, a woman. And they asked her, uh, is this Violet Jessup? And she said, yes. She said, uh, the person asked, ah, oh, here we go, guys. Look who we are transitioning to. And what a, is that a beautiful shot or what? Look how beautiful this shot is. Um, but so anyway, going back to uh, the story, um, this person, uh, after confirming it was Violet Jester, said, um, were you on the Titanic? She said, yes. Did you have a baby in your arms? And uh, Jessup said, yes. And uh, from what I, if my memory serves, the woman just kind of laughed and hung up. So, uh, let's see, uh, Steve says she passed away in 1971. Yeah, uh, I, I knew for sure it was before the wreck was discovered. I, I was pretty far off on when, though. Uh, Mark says, yay, Olympic. No, nope, Mark, this is not Olympic. <laughs> this is Titanic. I am still, I am working on uh Olympic footage and Olympic footage will be coming back into the game or into the stream. You know uh, already that we've had it, we've looked at Olympic previously, but I am in the process of recording all new footage of Olympic. But for now, uh, this right here is Titanic. Uh, Max, it was a different survivor. I'm not sure who it was though. Okay. Uh, Aaron, May 5th, 1971, she was 83 years old. Great Ashfield, Suffolk, England. So there you have it, guys. Uh, I would be interested in knowing if it, uh, if it was a survivor he took, you know, who was it? <laughs> Mark, I never zoomed in. 
Interesting shot of the bow here, guys. Um, you know, to quote the movie, that's the last time Titanic ever saw daylight. Guys, I need a quick swig of water. Uh, I will be right back. Enjoy looking at Titanic here. Okay, guys, sorry about that. Let's see. Uh, Nathan sent a pic for you to look at later. Okay, uh, I will check it out uh, after, the, uh, after the stream, Nathan. Uh, Matt, only a quick swig, not a full goal. Yeah. Uh, Aaron says, I am drinking a beer. You know what, Aaron? Here, here's my plans after the stream is over. Uh, I'm going to get tacos and I'm probably going to go pick up a six pack of something because, uh, as I said, when we started the stream, uh, it was a pretty rough week for me. So, yeah, I think I might have a few tonight. Uh, Steve says it happened on the 1976 dive. He brought Britannic survivor Sheila Macbeth Mitchell. Good to know. I, I will try and look into that later on, Steve. Uh, I am not familiar. Really, honestly, I'm not familiar with a lot of Britannic survivors. I mean, Violet, of course. I mean, we all know uh, about Violet. But I'm certain I'm also certainly more familiar with uh, a lot of Titanic survivors. But I will try, I will I will make a mental note to uh, to read up on her and because uh, we, we know uh, there were no soldiers, uh, troops, whatever, on the ship. It, from what I remember, it was strictly crew on the Britannic uh, when, the, uh, when she sunk. And that was uh, another reason that contributed to the loss of life being so low. And, of course, as we know, had she... Uh, Oh, by the way, we switched ships here. We're looking at the USS New Orleans now. We have not looked at the New Orleans in a bit. Um, we know that had the two lifeboats not uh, been involved uh, with the propeller incident, there would have been no loss of life on Britannic. Um, uh, Aaron says, someone invite me to Discord. Can someone, uh, can someone do that? Uh, is he on... Um, is Aaron on Moonzer's Discord? Uh, if so, can someone that's also there invite him to our Discord? Uh, Nathan, flavored water. No, well, technically, if you think about it, and this is a weird tangent, is all is is it all drinks not flavored water? Anyway, <laughs> I don't know. Weird thought. Uh, see you put a photo there. Uh, let's see. Uh, Nathan tries sending a link. I think he got it. Uh, yeah, I think he got it. Excellent. Uh, so everyone, uh, we'll, we'll have to uh, give Aaron a nice big welcome in the Discord here. Uh, I will. I will. I will do my wave uh, after the live stream, Aaron. Uh, Milan, there were military personnel on her, military medical personnel. The entire ship was in military order, hence why the evacuation went mostly well. Right. But what, what I, I think I probably misworded that uh, or misspoke, Milan. What I, I meant to say was everyone who was on board the ship were crew. You know, uh, they weren't, there were no people, uh, wounded uh, troops that were being transported at the time. Uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong on that, but yeah, I, I'm fairly certain that everyone who was on the ship was part of the crew. Uh, 
uh, Ozzy, shaking, not stirred with a twist. I don't know what I'm getting. Uh, I'll, I'll probably just go buy a six pack of, I don't know, whatever, whatever beer I can find on the shelf that uh, I want, you know. Uh, Milan, yeah. Oh, you mean there were no patients? Yes, yeah. yes. Thank you. Uh, I couldn't find the right words, Milan. That's what I was trying to say. You know, everyone was crew. Now, speaking of uh, of tough old ships, the the USS New Orleans here. If you guys want to read about one tough ship, look up USS New Orleans. We're talking about a ship that had a 150-foot section of its bow completely blown off and did not sink. This ship sailed backwards to a port, not once but twice, for repairs. You want tough. USS New Orleans is the ship you want to read about. Uh, Aaron, light beer. You waistline. Your waistline. Yes. <laughs> and I, I got a dad bout anyway. Am I really concerned about my waistline? <laughs> Steve, I thought there were some that were returning to their units after being relieved for medical reasons. Uh, let's see. Uh, Milan, uh, yeah, there, there weren't any. Imagine how much worse it would have been if they hit the mine on the return voyage filled with patients. Correct. Uh, no, Steve, to, uh, I, as far as I understand, everyone on the ship was crew. Uh, Wolf, this entire class was pretty tough. You're referring to the New Orleans class because, yeah, New Orleans was also the name of the class of ship. Uh, USS Pittsburgh lost her bow in a typhoon and made it back. Man, you can talk about how, you know, much better ships are made today, and granted they are, but you know what? These ships, you know, the warships, the ocean liners of this era, you know, more like the World War II era, these ships could take a pounding and keep going, you know? See, and you know, I did not ask if the SS United States would have survived the Titanic situation because uh, I don't even think that needs to be said. That's pretty obvious to me, you know. And and the same thing if she were put into the situation as uh, Britannic or Lusitania, Big U, I firmly believe, would have survived that. And uh, by the time of the SS United States, since I since I mentioned her. Um, they were no longer riveting hulls together. Uh, SS United States hull was welded together. Uh, Aaron, so there are many USS New Orleans. I suppose you're referring to USS New Orleans CA-32. Yes, uh, yes, Aaron, that is the ship that we are looking at right now. And I do have a model of her. Let me go grab her for you. Uh, so yeah, here we go. Uh, here is uh, USS New Orleans, uh, the one to seven hundred trumpeter model. I built this uh, last year. Uh, don't think I've got room for her on the shelf. Sometimes I've got it. Depends on what shell, uh, what ships I put on the shelf each week. Um, red turns rather or not. I've got enough room for this one because she is kind of small. Uh, but I'm just going to put her, set her down right in front of me. Uh, Moonzer, welcome, welcome. How are you doing? Uh, how was your week been, my friend? Uh, we've been talking, uh, we've been talking a lot about uh, Britannic. We've we've been talking about the Queen. We've been putting Queen Mary in some situations that, comparing her to Titanic, Britannic, Lusitania, would she survive those situations? Uh, we've been talking a little bit about the Texas. Uh, Mark, nice model. Thank you very much, Mark. I uh, appreciate that. Let's see. Uh, Wolf, really good model you built. Thank you, Wolf. Uh, Aaron, that's so fun. Uh, Wolf, I'm still impressed by it every time I see it. Well, thank you very much, Wolf. I appreciate that. Uh, she is a wonderful little model. Um, extremely, 
tedious to build, but I'm glad I did it. But I won't be building anything smaller than an ocean liner or a battleship in 1 to 700 again. Uh, Moonzer, hello, James. How are you? I am doing well uh, this evening, Moonzer. Um, I had a very, very rough week, uh, as I mentioned uh, at the beginning, but I'm doing uh, much better now that we're streaming and we're hanging out. We're talking about things that we love here. Uh, Moonzer, can I be a mod, please? I only... Uh, maybe in the future, Moonzer, I, I really don't have enough need for a bunch of mods right now. Um, but, uh, if this gets to the point where we've got, you know, 40, 50 people and I can't keep up with the chat, um, ask me again and I will definitely consider you for it. Uh, Ozzy, awesome model. Thank you, Ozzy. Uh, Steve James, the big U was a combination of riveted and welded construction. Okay, well, uh, I stand corrected then. Uh, I thought she was completely welded, you know, from stem to stern. So uh, there you go. I just learned something. Uh, Wolf, carriers aren't bad in 1 and 700. It's just those AA guns that's the worst. Yeah, uh, that would have to be a serious uh, pain in the butt. But... I probably would do a carrier in one to seven hundred. Uh, Moser James, you should get an Airfix RMS Queen Elizabeth. Uh, Moser, I have been looking at them. Uh, th the only problem I have is they are extremely expensive on eBay. Uh, that's the only reason I have not gotten one of a Queen Elizabeth yet. Uh, she is on my list. If I can find one uh, that is within my budget, uh, you rest assured that I will get her. She is on my list, and I do happen to know that she is your favorite ocean liner. So, uh, no, she is on my list, Moser. That's for sure. Um, I've also been on the hunt for Lucy as well. But the only Lucy uh, models I can find are on eBay uh, one to three fifty, bleh, one to three fifty scale, and they're like three hundred bucks a piece. So I, I can't spend that kind of money uh, on a model. And the Queen Elizabeth models aren't that expensive, but they are pricey. Now I have not checked in a while on eBay for uh, either one of those, so I may need to uh, to to check again. Aaron, my eyesight will fail on me will fail me on something that small, but I love building models. Well, Aaron, uh, I do have model building videos on my YouTube channel, so uh, if you're interested in watching those, um, every model that I have, and I've got about seven or eight of them, I've built every one of them uh, myself, and I have put them uh, all the build videos on my YouTube channel. Um, I build model ships. Um, Milan uh, builds model ships. In fact, he's going to be helping me uh, with a Britannic conversion. Uh, Wolf Lord builds a lot of ships. So, um, you know, w we have people that you can interact with on the Discord with that. Uh, Wolf says, really wish Airfix would release their ocean, would re release their ocean liner kits. Airfix needs to re-release theirs, and Ravel needs to put out or re-release the Olympic. Because, as you guys have known, from those of you that have followed the channel uh, for a while now, the Olympic kit is nothing more than the Titanic kit with Olympics hull. So there's really no reason why they can't put that kit out again. I mean, all they have to do is just keep making the Titanic pieces, and they have the mold for the Olympic hull. I don't understand why they discontinued that. Uh, Moonzer, I don't really have a favorite ocean liner. I love them all equally. Okay, well, my mis my mistake, Moonzer. I I thought for sure, and you know, uh, clearly I was wrong. But I thought I read on your Discord somewhere that Queen Elizabeth was your favorite. But uh, but uh, thank you for the correction. Let's see. Mark, I have Lusitania, still unfinished, but did find the rest of the pieces. I think 
correct me if I'm wrong, Mark, but you did share uh, your photos of your uh, of your Lusitania right when you first joined uh, my Discord. Am I correct on that? I know somebody did, and it's got to be you because you're the only person I would know that actually has it. Uh, Steve, I'll show you pics later of a QM Yaro boiler model we are building for YTP. It's one to one to one, one to twelve hundred scale. Yeah, definitely. I would love to see that, Steve. Let's see, uh, Milan. I'm working on my Britannic model at this moment too. Uh, Milan, I think I'm gonna. Olympics is going at a very quick pace, uh, as you know, because I'm posting Discord uh, updates regularly. Um, I have a I have a feeling I might start my Britannic before you finish yours. <laughs> We're both waiting on a piece, uh, that's for sure. Uh, Milan, uh, <laughs> Steve says, Moonser's favorite is QE, don't lie. Uh-huh, you see that? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Milan, I once emailed Ravel if they plan to do a rerun of the Olympic, and they said they don't have such plans at the moment. I kind of expected that answer, but it was worth a try. I attempted the same thing, uh, Milan, uh, seeing if they would ever re-release -re it. This was before I finally found a model of Olympic that I could build. And uh, I just did not get a response. So... I see uh, uh, Aaron is now officially on the Discord. Welcome, Aaron. I'm looking forward to, uh, to chatting with you on there. Uh, Moonser, yes, I love the Queen Elizabeth very much. I focus on her most of the time. You know, it's, you know what's almost as equally sad to me about the Queen Elizabeth is she had a chance to be the exact same thing that the Queen Mary is today. And she, uh, I forget what city it was, but she was put in Florida after she was retired. I forget what city, I forget the reasons why, but she ended up not staying there. Uh, you know, she went to, uh, uh, what it, is it, Hong Kong she's in, uh, where she became CY's University, and, you know, tragedy befell her. All right, we're switching ships here, guys. Um, this is the last ship we'll be looking at for the stream this week. That is the showboat, USS North Carolina. We have not looked at the North Carolina in a while. Let's see. Uh, Milan, it's good that I'm still a bit ahead of you with my Britannic so I can pave the way and figure out all the steps before you get there. I agree completely, Milan, and I'm, I'm glad you started before I did. <laughs> uh, let's see, Mark. Uh, Moons also loves Punka Louvers. Uh, Moons or James, you should check out Theroler 3D. They sell a lot of cool ocean liner models. I have many of these models. Can you... Can you post a link to that in uh, mine or your Discord, Moonzer? I would be interested in checking that out. Uh, Max is Port Everglades, Florida. That's where uh, Queen Elizabeth had uh, first went to. Uh, we'll see. Wolf, I think New Orleans was firing on the Japanese battleship Fuso on the video. Uh, yeah, Moonzer, uh, she was in Port Everglades, Florida. Well, that's North Carolina Steve in Dazzle. Absolutely. She looks great in Dazzle, doesn't she? And truthfully, most ships do. Now, Steve, uh, Wolf, love that beautiful ship. She is a beautiful ship. Steve says, love that paint scheme. Yes, and I think I still have some more of these to uh, to uh, to use on her in, in game. I've not played her in a while in game. North Carolina... Uh, in the, in the warships game is one of my favorite ships to do operations with. She is a beast in operations. I, I love playing North Carolina in uh, in that game mode. Moonzer, I've been on board the USS North Carolina. So have I, Moonzer. Uh, when did you go to her? Um, I went uh, two years ago in June. Um, 
I went to a, a Marine Corps graduation uh, at the uh, MCRD Paris Island. Uh, that's the Marine Corps uh, boot camp that's on the East Coast. Uh, I went and watched someone graduate a uh, Marine boot camp at Paris Island. Uh, but that same day, uh, we drove from Paris Island to Jacksonville, North Carolina. Uh, we spent the weekend out there with a loved one uh, for their birthday. And on that weekend, we went uh, to Wilmington and did the tour of the North Carolina. Uh, Wolf, I'll never understand how anyone wouldn't love the American World War II battleships. They are gorgeous, and that's why I love them. They are big, beautiful beasts. I love battleships, man. But you knew that already. <laughs> uh, Aaron, is that BB-55 or 52? Uh, yeah, you, you got it, Aaron. She is That is 55. Mark, Olympic looked awesome in Dazzle. I would absolutely kill to have a model of Olympic in her first Dazzle. She, she had two Dazzle schemes, but the first one is the one that I prefer. Um, Milan, my weak spot is ocean liners in white. They are beautiful. So Milan, is does that make Britannic your favorite of the Olympians? Curious. Uh, Moonser, the Queen Elizabeth was in Port Everglades from December 1968 to February 1971. Okay, so she actually she was there longer than I thought she was. Oh, well, interesting how many how interesting how there are there were two ships in World War II named Queen Elizabeth. Yeah, there was the um, the warship. Now. I, I admittedly, I don't know as much about that, but uh, Wolf, I'm certain that you would be able to educate us on that. Yeah, there was, of course, RMS. Well, actually, she, uh, during the war, she would have been... Uh, Queen Elizabeth was also uh, the ocean liner. She was a troop ship as well in World War II, was she not? So that would have made her HMT uh, Queen Elizabeth. Uh, Moons are my parents have been on board her many times. They have footage from 2008 and more. Nice. I wish I would have started my YouTube channel sooner than I did because I could have made a, vid a video about my visit to the North Carolina. Um, unfortunately, I did not uh, start like seriously doing my YouTube channel till after that visit. Uh, Aaron, some facts. Eight Babcock and Wilcox boilers, uh, 121,000 horsepower. Jesus. Uh, Moonser, my dad refers to her as the war machine. And the Mauritania was once white. Yes, towards the end of Mauritania's career, uh, she was repurposed, uh, for lack of a better way of putting it, as a cruise ship, and she was painted all white for that. Wasn't really a fan, if I'm being honest. Uh, uh, Steve, and Aquitania was white in her last years. Was was Aquitania also a uh, a cruise ship in her final years? And, uh, and Steve also says correct. HMT and HMS. Uh, Wolf, HMS Queen Elizabeth was a Queen Elizabeth class super dreadnought battleship. And served in both World War One and World War Two, and was scrapped shortly after the conflict. Man, imagine if they would have saved her. That's one thing we have been for uh, us, as in uh, you know the United States. Uh, we've been a lot better than most places about preserving ships. It's just uh, that's my take on it, anyway. In, uh, as I'm building Britannic, I'm growing very fond of her, but 400 and 401 sharing the first place on my top list. 400 for her career, 401 for her looks. Yes, agreed. And uh, Steve, yes, uh, Aquitania was also a cruise ship towards the end of her career as well. Uh, Wolf, uh, HMS Queen Elizabeth was also a sister ship to the infamous HMS Warspite. And the HMS Barham, which her sinking has been featured, excuse me, guys, in several documentaries. 
Good to know. Good to know. So yeah, guys, I asked this question earlier. Um, what what is what is you guys uh, Mount Rushmore of ocean liners and warships? You know, with Milan, I know me and m myself and Milan, we we are very much all about the Olympians for sure. But uh, I would also uh, on my Mount Rushmore of ocean liners, I would also include Queen Mary and SS United States. Uh, HMS Warspite, her sister was going to be preserved, but they didn't have the money for her and they scrapped her. That makes me think about the big U. And uh, uh, we're not going to end on a down subject. Uh, I don't want to think about the, the big U uh, worst case scenario. Uh, uh, Moser, the last captain of the QE was Commodore Jeffrey Marr. Uh, Steve, with liners, do I need, do I even need to say, well, Steve, we of course know what's number one for you, but what would be your other three? Um, Mark, uh, Olympic class, Queen Mary, USS Arizona. I love that list, Mark. Um, so I already said my ocean liners, my warships would be the Kid, the Alabama, the North Carolina, and Mo. Those would that would be my Mount Rushmore of warships. Uh, well, if the entire class consists of Queen Elizabeth, Valiant, Warspite, Barum, and Malaya. Uh, Mark also USS Pennsylvania. Uh, let's see, uh, Aaron Battleship is BB sixty two. Ocean Liner SS United States. Very, very nice. BB-62, of course, is USS New Jersey. Um, are you going to be going visit her in dry dock, uh, Aaron? Uh, Steve has already told us that he's going um, to, he's going to make that trip. Uh, Ozzy, true or false, which battleships were in the Gulf War? Uh, was it the Missouri and Wisconsin? Yes, it was Missouri and Wisconsin. Uh, Steve says, for warships, I would have to say IJN Yamato. She was undoubtedly a beast. I was never a big fan of her, um, the gigantic tower. Um, I, I and, and you guys have told me what it's called. I forget, but, you know, she had that, one gigantic tower, which I, I would imagine the bridge was part of, and then like a smaller one behind it. I just aesthetically, I wasn't a, I wasn't a fan of the of the way the ship looked. Uh, Wolf, Missouri, and Wisconsin both served during the Gulf War. Yes, they did. Yeah, in North Carolina wrecking shop here just got another Citadel. Uh, yeah. Wolf Yamato was the right battleship for the. Wait, oh, never mind. He deleted it. <laughs> uh, Aaron, nice call out, Steve. Yes, she is a badass beast. Yes, sir, she is. <laughs> Let's see. Wow, we got a whole bunch of torpedoes coming here. I think the North Carolina can survive this. Well, she's only going to get hit by two of them, so there you go. So, uh, yeah, these are some pretty solid lists, guys. Um, I, I can't dispute any of these. Yes, yeah, Steve, um, after Queen Mary, what, what do you go with? What are your other favorite, you know, what, what other ocean liners after Queen Mary go on your Mount Rushmore? I'm, I'm curious to know. Or did you? Or did I already read it and I already forgot what you said? Oh nope, he's about to say it. <laughs> uh, Max Battleship for me is probably the USS Zellers. Uh, yes, I I remember us having that conversation, uh, Max, and I, I get why. Uh, ocean liners, Queen Mary, Empress of Britain, and Mauritania. Uh, solid, solid list. Of course, we're going to get something close to Empress of Britain uh, when Mike Brady's game comes out because uh, we know one of the launch ships is Empress of Ireland. Now, are they sisters? Was Britain and Ireland sisters? Uh, I, I don't know. 
Uh, Wolf says, Yamato was the perfect battleship for the wrong war. Imagine if Yamato existed in World War One. Jesus. And turn away from the camera for a second to yawn, guys. Uh, Steve, my others for liners. Aquitania, France from 1911, and Coronia II. Wow, you might be the you might be the first guy um, who uh, doesn't list one of the Olympians. <laughs> That's impressive, though. It, I, I like the variety. Uh, Ozzy torpedoes in the water. Yeah, she survived them though. It's all good. Uh, Wolf Britain wasn't a sister to Ireland. Okay, Aaron. Oh wow, we've got a super thanks here from Aaron. Uh, anyhow, I will buy you dinner and a beer. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much. Wow. I truly, truly appreciate that, Aaron. I, I, I really do. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm getting tacos and beer. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. I, I Wow. I really do appreciate that. Um, well, there were several empress of ships throughout the uh, yeah, I knew there were there were more than one uh, empress. I, I didn't know which ones are and are not uh, sisters. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Again, Aaron, thank you. Thank you so much. I really, really do appreciate that. That means a lot to me. It really does. Thank you so much. Wow. <laughs> you. It's been a rough week, man. You. You guys have. You guys are making my night, man. Seriously. Uh, just coming on here and chatting with you guys. Ugh. Taking a lot of load uh, of stress off me right now. <laughs> Mark, LOL, yay beer. Nathan's still lurking around. Yeah, and I, I appreciate that, Nathan. Um, I wonder if Matt's going to get on and stream something later. We haven't, uh, he's been kind of quiet for a minute. We've been watching uh, Matt a lot, too. Um, yeah, so that reminds me, guys. Um, uh, Matt here. Uh, in the discord and uh on the uh on our uh youtube channel he's always here each week um for uh for the live streams uh he streams on twitch he plays various different games on twitch uh his twitch handle is uh 44 magnum it's the same as discord so uh if you guys are looking for someone else to watch um you can check him out on twitch um he doesn't have a set schedule. It's just kind of random. So if you set notifications and, you know, you're bored one night and he's on, you know, you can check him out. <laughs> Tim finally decided to show up. Tim, welcome. Welcome. How are you doing, my friend? So, guys, um, that reminds me of something else. If you guys are interested uh in an older version of the live stream, um, I had my buddy Tim here on at one point a while back, and we did a compare and contrast of the two best, or really the only two good, Titanic movies. Of course, the Cameron movie and The Night to Remember. That is on the YouTube channel. If you go into the History TV playlist, you can find that. It's We're comparing Titanic from 1997 to a night to remember. So if that's something you guys are interested in, uh, check it out. It's a good conversation. Uh, Nathan, yeah, he's he's been streaming a lot of Gunsmith Simulator and Sniper Elite. Uh, yeah, he may be moving to YouTube soon. Yeah, he did tell me that. Uh, uh, he was back. Uh, Matt was uh, on the phone planning a uh, a photo shoot. <laughs> no, Steve. Uh, is it, it Curvesa? Curvesa? I'm sorry if I'm butchering that. Butchering that. I'm not the greatest with pronunciation, guys. <laughs> then tacos. It, it might be both. I might have my beer with tacos at the same time. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Steve Priority. Yeah. Tim says, those were good movies. Yes, sir. They most certainly were. Uh, Tim, how was your, uh, how did your week go, my friend? I was telling everyone uh, I had a bit of a rough week, but, you know, these guys have, you guys have made my night. You really have. Uh, Max, James, did you know that the Empress of Britain II was the biggest ship to sink by a German sub in World War II? Uh, no, Max, I did not know that. 
So Empress of Britain, the biggest one to sink in World War II. Britannic, World War I. Uh, Mark, great video. So yeah, I take it Mark watched that video. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it, Mark. We had a lot of fun recording that. And uh, I know Steve and I have uh, talked about uh, me being on his channel at some point in the future and uh, him coming back on my live stream at some point in the future. Uh, so you guys have that to look forward to as well. And I'm going to probably bring uh, Tim back at some point uh, as well. I know we, we've talked about, uh, he and I have had uh, discussions about that behind the scenes. So, um, yeah, you can look forward to that too. Uh, Matt, we just got one of those Blackstone flat top griddles, and I plan on finding a recipe for shrimp tacos. Hell yeah. Uh, Steve, oh Lord, so... Carn Asada Street Tacos. We ain't got nothing that fancy over here, Steve. I'm going to Taco Bell. <laughs> Billy, what's up? Uh, great information. Well, I hope so. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate uh, appreciate that. Uh, Wolf Bow Ships, ironically, have enough have Britain in the name. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Nathan, uh, bring me over. Pay the gas. I'll come stay at your house for a weekend. <laughs> uh, Steve, yes, we'll do that very. Yes, we will do that very soon on my channel. Yeah, Steve, just let me know. Uh, let me know uh, when you want uh, to do that, and uh, we can figure out uh, a date and time to do that. Tim, get some Mexican pizza. Usually Mexican pizza is my go-to for Taco Bell. <laughs> I usually get the Mexican pizza combo, but I actually ate before uh, I started streaming. So I, I'm not like super, super hungry, but a couple of tacos would just be great right now. I, I just, I need a taco fix. <laughs> uh, Steve, we will discuss. Yes, we will. Absolutely. Uh, so guys, we're we're almost 15 past the one hour mark. Um, let's see. I think I'll go ahead and uh, begin to start wrapping this up uh, as I normally do. Um, our content schedule is as follows. Um, we have one full length video uh, every Friday morning that comes out at 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. Um, our weekly uh, video shorts are 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, and they are Monday through Friday, and those are our video shorts are pretty much about anything and everything. Had a Spider-Man one that got a whole bunch of views this week. And, of course, our weekly one-hour live stream at 7 o'clock every Friday evening, Central Standard Time. And, uh, yeah, that, that's our content schedule. Um, so... Guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I had a great time tonight chatting with everyone, uh, especially our newcomers. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the Discord. Uh, I can't wait to get to know you guys. Uh, it, we have a lot of fun here, and I know uh, we're going to have a lot more fun in the future with, uh, with some even new members uh, joining in with us. Uh, yeah, so uh, Aaron, thanks again for the super thanks, my friend. Uh, I truly, truly appreciate that. So, guys, that wraps it up for this week. Um, I will, of course, see you guys uh, same time, same place, next Friday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. I'll see you guys all on the Discord. And, of course, until the, mean until the next time, you know the drill. Drive safely. <laughs>